that every guy that I see on the shell beds is like throwing some swim beds. It's like this long or whatever. It's huge. Like you can see it from a mile away. They're slinging these big old things out there. The creek hole that one today was as big as the arm. So man, you need to put that up. Ain't yeah. Gonna and they, they will bite foot. those on this lake, but man. The one swim. Man. They will bite those on this lake. The problem is, for me personally, the problem is, man, I'm trying to get bites. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I'm guiding. I'm trying to get some bites. Not out there for one, Since one swing. Since they down at Ivy, have you been seeing a lot of A-rings out here? Mm-hmm. No, they didn't carry on up there. No, I think is... I think the live scope deal is going to take longer for people to... Ad- it's going to take longer for the majority of people to really dial in out here because of the timber. Yeah. The lakes where they're just whacking them on this live scope deal, it's like, these fish are in open water yeah. and there'll be a time out here when the fish will get in open water and those guys will get after it and probably throw a rig but it'll be later in the year when fish get way out there in the middle and suspend uh, right now on this lake there's so much timber from 20 foot in most places you go and there's so many fish so shallow man you can't throw an a rig where most of the fish are living right now you just can't i guess you could throw one if you rigged it with like weightless swim baits or something but no i haven't i haven't seen hardly anybody doing that I don't. I don't think I've seen anybody. Do I, saw Not, a guy, I saw a guy today out in the middle. A of, few uh, weeks ago, I saw a guy three. doing it, kind of in the mouth of a cove. But he was in like 15, 20 foot of water. There's yeah. not really hardly any fish in 15 to 20 foot of water anymore. Yeah, I went to Ivy the week after all that happened, and every boat was going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah it's of course, and they should be, and they yeah, should I be. I'm throwing one. Yeah, it's it's open water. You can see them on the live scope, you know. And if you got open water on a live scope, there's no bait on earth better. <laughs> There's just yeah. no bait on earth better to make a fish follow and commit than a than a rig. Yeah. There's not. Rear. Big old big old swim bait. Yeah, yeah. Or a jerk bait if you're playing sport. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> hey, now they can't throw an a rig. But you know, on this lake, like I think that jerk bait's kind of the deal on the last couple on this lake because of the timber. Yeah. Excuse me. But, I caught a dang three pound catfish the other day on a jerk bait. <laughs> Believe it or not. I do believe it. Vic knows I believe it. Vic, that's all. Vic went on a guide trip with me, and all he could catch was catfish. Now his partner caught bass, but Vic was only catching catfish. You did. You caught some. I remember the catfish deal, and I and I won't even let catfish or drum in my boat. He's like, no. I hang them over the side, and unhook them with the pliers. They're not touching my car. I can get that slime all over my boat. Throwing that spoon any? No, not at all. No, I'm just fishing too shallow for that. Um, you know the shellbait deal. If you want to pursue it, it, it is a way to catch a giant. Like there's no, like we were sitting on. Today was tough, so you know, last two or three hours a day we were running shell beds because wind was blowing great. The wind was great. The only reason I didn't fish shell beds all day today because the wind was perfect for it. Um, the only reason I didn't fish shell beds all day today was because I just feel like there's so many fish that are moving away from that with this moon cycle and the water temps that we're getting to now. I just don't. I feel like in a couple more weeks, those shell beds are going to be the freaking deal. Like, the deal. Like, the deal. But right now, I just feel like there's so many moving away from that. There's just not a lot out there. But, um, yeah, we were, we were fishing some at the end of the day today, and the wind was perfect. And, and we did have a guy got unfortunate. He got a big it – was, it was one of the big fish bites. It was one of those – I mean, about jerked a rod out of his hands. And then when he swung back on it, he got the weight hung up in the shell. Oh, shit. And so we didn't get the fish. Uh, but they're out there. The Carolina rig's been the most consistent bait for me on that deal. Uh, swim baits have been really good. I've been throwing that whale on a jig head. A lot of guys are throwing line threes and catching them. I, the, the, a, few, the, a few guys that I know have been throwing line threes and catching some fish on the line threes, some big fish. Um, man, and a, a jerk bait. Like... I've just, over the last couple years, I've become convinced there's just not a bad time to throw a jerkbait on this lake. They just eat a jerkbait out here, guys. I mean, they do. I don't know why. Um, maybe the log perch. We've got a bunch of log perch in this lake, like we are talking about before the center And they're shaped just like a jerkbait. I think a lot of bass eat more of those than we realize. But I don't know. They just eat a jerkbait. It probably has something to do with how much pressure that these fish get on fork. And how erratic and reaction oriented a jerk bait is. You know, there's just not a better reaction bait in bass fishing than a jerk bait. It's like it like pauses and start stops. It's real violent, erratic, and sudden. And and so I think that's why they bite a jerk bait so good out here for a couple of those reasons. But 
Now, jerkbait's been good. It's been good lately, uh, especially if, if you're not just fishing up in one or two foot of water on those shell beds, you're fishing out in four, five, and you can throw those shallow jerk baits and, and get after them, and they'll bite it. They're there. They're there. Pros are using them in tournaments this weekend there at the Craver. A lot of pros use them in a lot of tournaments, and that, that says something. And, and I really think that has to do with that reaction thing we just mentioned. It's just I, I can't think of any bait that is a better reaction bait than a jerk bait. With, with the, the start-stop and the erratic nature of the side-to-side -side and up and down, it's just so erratic and, and so sudden in its movements when you fish it right. You know, one of the key components to throwing a jerk bait is going to be a loop knot. So if you don't know how to tie a loop knot, you need to look that up. If you need to take the split ring off the nose of the jerk bait and tie a loop knot, you'll have much more side to side and much more erratic action. Yeah. Yeah, and you're, yeah. It was funny. Uh, last week I was throwing a jerk bait a bunch before we went and did more shallow stuff this week. Last week I was throwing a jerk bait a bunch, and it was two or three days into the week, and man, my dang wrist was hurting. <laughs> my hand, and I was sitting there, I was like, dude, I'm going to have arthritis by the time I'm 40 from throwing a dang jerk bait. And I probably will, but it, it'll, it'll wear on your wrist. Especially this time of year when the water temps are warmer, I'm really, I'm hammering that thing. Like, I'm I'm twitching it hard. I'm twitching. I'm not really pausing it hardly at all. It's moving fast, and it, it'll it'll give you a workout. Shaft patterns or yeah, basic? Yeah, because the areas that I'm throwing that jerk bait in around the shell beds, the water's clear, pretty yeah. clear for here it is. And so, yeah, we're throwing shad patterns. I think 4K shad is the one I'm throwing by 6 inches of the Pro 106X. Um, is the one I've been having the most success on, but I think shad pattern's the way to go. Now, if you want to throw a jerkbait in some dirty water, then go get some orange or some red and throw a jerkbait. That's, that can, hey, we're still cool enough and the water's dirty enough that that whole orange and red deal can still play a little bit, you know? It can. Got my War Eagles trying bait ready. That's right. That old orange, that orange blade. bladed one? Yeah, that's a hey, good on one. That, on that War Eagle, I bought one and I changed out that will blade to the number six quad yeah. blade. And you can feel it's like a thing. Oh, it's hey. I, I let him throw it today. That's top secret stuff right there, dog. <laughs> or a mountain. Oh, oh, that, that. Yeah, so what he's talking about, for those that don't know, War Eagle makes a 3 8 ounce spinner bait. It's got a chartreuse and white skirt. It's got an orange Colorado blade for the lead blade. And then the main blade is a is a gold willow. It's a pretty good size gold willow in the number package. Four, I think. But if you take it, it off and put a number six on, you it'll ride like you can throw it in shallow water and it'll stay up because of that bigger blade. And it's got a lot of flash because it's a big giant willow blade and it just thumps. So you got it shakes the rod, bring it in. You got you got the flash of the big willow blade. You got the thump because it's a bigger blade. You got the the orange color for the dirty water. The you know East Texas. Prime colors, orange Chartreuse this time of white. year. Uh, Chartreuse and white's good and visible. And the key deal is with that number six blade on there and three eighths ounce, it doesn't roll. Mm -hmm. A lot of spinner baits on three eighths ounce, you put a blade that big on them, they'll want to turn on their side. Like that one doesn't, and that's the, that's why I throw that one. And it's just, it's yeah, bro. I'm gonna listen. I figured that deal out back in the day, and I don't. I'm sure I wasn't the first one to figure that particular spinner bait out. But I'd never heard it from anybody. I just saw the orange blade, thought that was interesting because of the pre-spawn color deal. And then I knew I wanted to fish it slower, so I upsized the blade. And I'm going to tell you, the first year or two I had that figured out, it was like, whew, it was insane. And then one of my buddies uh, that I told, Chris Blackman, everybody know the guy this podcast oh, with me? Chris. Oh, yeah. Hey, you got to get him to do this Marty uh, impersonation he was supposed to do here a couple weeks ago. <laughs> what, what is it? That the uh, Marty uh, Marty Robinson. Yeah. Well, he's coming as a special character this Sunday on the podcast. So oh, we yeah. may have to wait till the next week to do the Marty Robinson. We do need to make him do that. Yeah, because he's supposed to do it, but he never did do it. Yeah, we need to make him do that for sure. We yeah. got it. We got to make. We got to hold him up to that one. He gets away with a lot of stuff that I don't hold him accountable for. We need to make sure we hold him accountable for that one. But anyway, I told him about it, and he took his girlfriend at the time out here fishing, and they were catching like, like she had like a nine, like almost a ten, like a nine pounder. He had an eight pounder, they had a couple of sevens, like they just whacked him. And it was like his best day of fishing. And so he takes all these pictures, and he takes pictures with the entire cove in the background, and the spinner bay hanging off the rod in the bottom corner of the picture, and he posts them on Texas Fishing for them. <laughs> hey, and the next Saturday, the next Saturday, I was in there first thing in the morning, and I've never seen anybody, I've, I'm, like I said, I'm sure I wasn't the first one to figure that deal out. I've never seen anybody throw an orange bladed spinnerbait like that. I've never seen it on the water out here. This is long before I was guy. This is years ago. I went into that cove that morning, the one he took the pictures in, and every boat in there, which was a lot, 
There was like 10 or 12 boats in Every boat in there is throwing a spinnerbait with an orange blade on it. And I was idling out, and he was coming in. He was idling in as I was idling out. And all I said was, hey, I want you to see what every boat's throwing. Pay attention to what every single boat in here is throwing. You got to be more careful with your pictures, dog. Which is ironic, because now I kind of expose everything I do. But maybe that's why, you know, one of the reasons I, I, I decided to expose everything I do, because I, it's going to get out anyway, you know, these days. Heck, nothing's a secret anymore. Everything's so much exposure on everything. So. There ain't no, everyone knows what that one stump looks like that was in the background whenever you... I'm going to tell you, there's some daggum whole buzzard picture hawks out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They can, they can, like, if you put any shoreline in the background, they know exactly. Like, there's some guys that are, like, experts at that stuff, Jack. blur it all them. out except for you. And you know who the worst ones are? It's the guys that blur their backgrounds. If a guy is blurring his backgrounds, he's doing that because he's looking at everybody else's backgrounds. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> and he thinks everybody's doing it. That's why, yeah. The the blurred picture guys are the ones that look at them the most, I guarantee you. Turn around. Turn towards me like, we're going to take it here. <laughs> yeah, I don't blur the background. I just crop the picture where you can't see much. <laughs> if you can figure it out from there, you got it. You got it. Oh, he'll call me and he'll go, man, do you see what, where Billy cut those fish? I don't know. You go, I know where I'm that's at. I'll pay for that. You gotta figure it out. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. You got the, he's got the app, he's app subscriber, he's supposed to know. I don't have to, yeah. <laughs> it's only one of twenty years, he can figure yeah. that out. So you know, I went we went to Caney, you only got like maybe three or four spots three spots in there, you know? Yeah, a lot of spots down in the south, yeah. Yeah, shell beds. Well and they South End shell beds. Those shell beds have been good and they're kinda like I said, they're still good, like they're still okay right now, but they're going away from that this week. And I try to put I put a few new uh, spawning areas that I've really found some good fish in this week on there this week. We did a midweek update for Mega Bass, and I, it's like four or five spots that we put in there that were new spawning areas uh, that I've been catching them in that weren't on there before. Um, but yeah, I mean those shell beds have been I mean that's been the main thing of what I've been catching my big fish on. So there there is a lot of those on there, and there'll be a lot on there in April too because as those fish that are spawning over the next week or two as they come out, they're going to go right back to those shallow shell beds. Mm -hmm until it gets hotter and then they'll go deeper yeah so so there will be i mean the bottom line is those shallow feeding table type areas have in the majority of the lake the majority of the lake doesn't have coontail and hydrilla anymore it just doesn't so at lake fork with the majority of that being gone these shell beds have become the thing these sh and, and i almost hesitate to say shell beds because they're not all shell beds some of them are just hard clay points that have maybe some shell mixed in, but mostly they're just hard iron ore clay points. Um, some of them are sure enough shell beds, and when you drag a Carolina rig over, you can feel it. Uh, but none of them, none of these things, they're not like oyster reefs, you know, like they're not like tons of shell stacked up on top of tons of shell. Even on the ones that are shell beds, it's like a hard point with shell scattered on it. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's, that's what you're fishing, so uh, I think there's a little bit of misconception on the terminology when we say shell beds. It's not like the. It's not like salt water. It's it's a hard spot, a high hard spot, with some shell scattered on it. And the whole deal is that just wherever that shell gathers the most, wherever you can feel the most shell, that just tells you where the plankton gathers the most. Yeah. And wherever the plankton gathers the most, when it does gather, when the wind blows the right way, that's where the shad are going to gather the most. And you know we all know the value of finding the highest quantity of shad, the highest con condensed area of shad. So. What are you throwing on the back of that, Carolina? The hog walla. It's like a mix between a lizard and a brush hog, basically. Just yeah. a good creature bait. It's good. It's six cents makes it. It's a really good. They bite it. They bite it. I've caught them on every lake I've been to since it came out. Uh, if I'm just flipping, I've been doing some. You can catch them just Texas rigging shallow a little bit too now. Pitching in behind that, that palm weed and stuff or just mm -hmm. fishing on the bank, fishing the edge of reed heads, cattails, whatever. Uh, there, there is a bite there for just a regular old school pond fishing Texas rig bite with a quarter ounce weight. The hog wall is the bait I'm using on that. Um, you know, that lizard brush hog style, since I've ever been first coming out here, has been really hard to beat in March. Man, ain't nobody yeah. not, not have a bag of brush hogs in their, right. in their boat. Come on. Yeah, and that hog wall is just kind of a new upgraded version of that. So it is. It's a hybrid between a brush hog and a lizard. And it, they bite it. It's a good bait. They, they bite the heck out of it. Big and small. It'll catch them all. We rhyming tonight. Let's go. <laughs> yes, sir. Is the gate open? And I haven't driven behind the dam lately. I don't. I don't think it is, and I'm gonna tell you why. Because this water down here is staying clean on the south end. 
So what happens is when we get an overabundance of rain, and which is prone to, we get another heavy rain, they're going to have to open them. Yeah. It's really hard. Yeah. It, hard, but not hard. Not like a lot of volume, I don't think. I, don't, I think it's like less than a half inch. I think it's like a third of an inch. We might get away with that. But if, if we get one, another one of those one inch rains or more, they're going to have to open those gates. And what will happen is, like right now the dirty water is kind of in the creeks and stuff. And down here at the mouth of Little Caney, and like we talked about earlier, the whole southern end of the lake, the water's really pretty good clarity for Lake Fork. But if they open those gates, all that dirty water gets pulled down. So the way that I know if the gates are open or not, because I just don't ever really drive behind the dam the way I come to the lake, if the water down here starts getting dirty, they're sucking water because it's sucking that dirty water down the lake. It's still rising. As and, and right now, there's no way they're open because this stuff's staying it, way too clear down here. It, they're not open. It's, it's still, still rising. It's, it's you check water rising. level. Yeah, it's still rising. As it's still three, rising. Three days. Yeah. Three so days. Yeah, it's, it's not been open. rising, but not open. Right about, They'll just, probably I open think. it Saturday night, going into Sunday morning for you tournament guys. Just oh, yeah. screw everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Suck that muddy water down. Get some current going and freak them all out. Yeah. <laughs> Got about half an inch. Well, the, reason they, the reason they turned off today is probably because the, all the boats on the water raised the level. <laughs> that might be. That might be the reason the water level rose because there's a lot more boats on the water. It's 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 Lake Fork. It's March Madness. What we call it. It's uh, it is crowded out there. I will say I have not had any. I have not had any, what I would call issues, or. Not even issues, because it's really rare that you get in like where there's like a confrontation. Like that's really rare. But I haven't even had anybody do anything that I'll be like, man, that was messed up. Everybody's been as crowded as the lake is. Everybody's been as respectful as possible. Um, guides included. Everything's at a. I don't know what's going on, man. It's like everything's at a very peaceful, tranquil state around here lately, and I'm kind of like confused. Even you just screwed it all up by saying that. Everybody no. out here is going to be... No, everybody's being nice to everybody. Everybody's really? getting along. That's we got, scary. I'm not fishing anymore. Well, yeah. Know, right? We got the whole... What's it? Will Ferrell from Semi Pro. Everybody love everybody. <laughs> yeah, I mean... It's actually before the storm. Like I was down south. I was fishing along, and some, some guys are leaving out of the creek, and they say, hey, go here. There's a big old bed over there. Yeah. It's been tricky, but I mean, they literally pointed me to a. Yeah. A I had two guys right. like that today, though. Yeah, the bottom, did you catch that one over there? The bottom like, line is do, like, do, do, do guys get soft. irritated? Is there times when guys get irritated on the water with each other? Yes. Is that part of bass fishing? It happens. Does yeah. it happen? Absolutely. It happens at the highest level in pro tournaments. It happens between weekend anglers on Lake Fork on the weekend. It does happen. In my experience, 99.99999% of the fishermen that you come across on the water. Are going to be very open, very helpful, very friendly. I love the fishing culture, the bass fishing culture, for the vast majority. There's a very small minority that I absolutely despise. Yeah. You know, there there is a little bit, but it seems like as time goes on, that culture is getting ousted, and I think it has a lot to do with how exposed everything is now. I mean, do you want to be the guy acting like a fool and getting mad over a bass? Up on, oh, on camera, on video, going viral. <laughs> what six out of ten people got? I don't want to be that guy. Rolling. I don't want my kids to see that on YouTube, you know. And I, so I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But it seems like as time goes on, it's getting better and better. And maybe it's just that everything's exposed, and people have talked about the issues and exposed some of the issues, and so people are aware of it and they're more cognizant of trying to avoid that. But you know. Everything that I've seen this year, whether it was Sam Rayburn when I was down there, Talita Ben when I was down there, my time here at Lake Fork, everything has been, you know, kudos to all the guys out here. Kudos to all the weekend fishermen and kudos to all the fishing guys out here because it's definitely been different this year than, than most years in March. Um, everybody is super friendly, and I haven't had any – I mean, I was in a really small corner with a guy today, and I he was in there first, and he was in the back corner, and I thought maybe he was going to fish that corner and come out. So I was kind of trying to do the rotation thing that we do on mm -hmm. when it's crowded in Fork in March. You kind of do this little carousel deal, right? And then he chose to stay back there, so I stayed off him. But, you know, he never gave me any dirty looks or got frustrated. We got kind of close to each other because it was a really small corner. And I was trying to come in as he was coming out. And then he turned around and went back in there. And then I just kind of backed out and fished the mouth and left. But um, nobody's been rude in any way. It's, it's really been surprising, but pleasantly surprising. It's, it's made me very proud of being a part of this community because it's been awesome. So, you got your new boat out, sir? No, no, it's in the garage. No, I took it home. I had to run home and let the dog out. What color did you get? Huh? What color? 
It's the same color as last time, but it has red pinstripes. So it's silver and black with like a red outline around the whole black. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy with it. Well, we've got some video coming up. I, I need to do a video on it because I really want to show you guys the electronic setup because, bro, like, no electronics. I think I got the same setup that Wheeler has, and it's Are like you two and two or two and three. No, I'm one and two, bro. Well, I've got the same front setup as Wheeler has. I've only got one at the console. Listen, when you've got a graph as good as a Lawrence HDS Live 12, you don't need but one, dog. Like, I'm not that old. My eyes can still see the four-way split on the 12, so. Yeah, he, he don't need the, the, the maps on both screens. I don't, I don't need a map on one and down image on the other. Like, I can see the split screen still. I'm not that old. He had four. He had how many? He had four? Four on the console. My question is, how many daggum batteries does that man I mean, carry in the back of that boat? Some of them guys get so many up there and they can get seven volt freaking. Yeah. I got Hey, there you go. Some some of them guys get some stuff and it's like I don't know how you see over it to drive. Yeah. I guess it's, it's a safety to. hazard. Just drive by the map. It's all right. It's all right. I don't get it. So I'm actually glad this guy just walked in because uh, I want to let him come up here and talk a little bit. Oh lord. And I didn't think he was gonna make it tonight, but I'm glad he made it. So, for those that don't know, this is Cody Mays. Come on up here, Cody. Here, you take the seat. Oh, Lord. Take, take the captain's chair there, bud. Oh, so, this is Cody Mays. Man, it's going to beat you up mega bass right it, there. It is, it is a tournament weekend. It's one of the biggest tournament weekends of the year. It's the biggest single-day amateur tournament in the world. That's what's happening Sunday. And as far as tournament fishermen go, this guy is as good as any of them that I know around here. So, I, I'm just, I guess I'm going to interview you. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna sit over here. I'm gonna interview you from the side. I can't believe you're gonna do this to these people. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna set him up for failure. <laughs> He's a tournament fisherman, so he might lie to you. Take everything with a grain of salt. Name as a winner Sunday. Yeah. Everything's a lie. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I've been sitting here all night, just kind of telling them, you know, the different patterns that have been working for me, and kind of the different techniques that I'm using. I know you've been fishing. You're getting ready for this tournament this weekend. So what? I mean, basic run now. What, what's the what's the what's the go to? What what are you using right now? Well, right now, well, as of last weekend, I don't I don't have the opportunity to fish every day of the week, not yet. But um, as of last weekend, we we're still fishing um, secondary points, ten to fifteen foot of water, uh, drop shots, shaky heads, Carolina rigs, uh, and we were actually catching. Me and Vic were catching some pretty good slot fish and real good fish. But um, with the full moon. I think it's going to change it. It's going to push them up. Think they're going to move? They're going to move. Um, so you're talking about something completely different than what I talked about all night because I'm talking about shallow shell beds and spawning fish, and you're talking about <laughs> like mid depth staging fish. Yeah. But same thing on the shell beds. You think those fish are going away from you over the weekend? Uh, I, do. I think so too. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's all going to be a shallow bite. And, you know, later in the day, you know, what, what our plan is, we're going to go as far back as we can. Uh, we're gonna throw top waters at first thing in the morning and then move to moving baits um, Swim baits chatter baits spinner baits, whatever um, Later in the day after everybody's now, let me throw one thing in there before you continue So one thing you got to think about is when I was talking to you guys We were talking about catching you know for guys We're trying to catch big slot fish and, and over if we can and so I talked to you guys about how to try and specifically catch an over in the beginning And Cody the stuff he's telling you about this drop shot segment like that's gonna be more geared to work towards catching keeper fish in, in a slot lake, which is under 16 inches. So, yeah, yeah. so that's just a difference in how we're approaching it. I think. Yeah, it is. Because you're targeting a different fish tonight. Yeah, you're targeting big fish. We're targeting small yeah. fish with the with the capability of catching that big fish. Right. Uh, so we're 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 kind of splitting it up a little bit, but um, I mean, all you need is that one good size under to pay your tournament back, your feedback, and your expenses. Um, if you if you can get first thing in the morning on the frog bite, if you can get five good ones that are under 16 inches that are over two pounds, you can go set it to weigh in all the rest of the day. Have you been catching on a frog at all? Have you gotten through that at all? No, but it's kind of started this week. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's kind of started this week. That, yeah, that, yeah. But I think it's that time. So. It is. But, it is. Uh, and then later in the day, guys, after everybody's done beat the banks, um, push back, push back a little bit. Them fish ain't stupid. It's something you've talked to me about before. You like to do that. So when, when, when you got a lot of pressure on the lake and it's this time of year and everybody's running the bank, you like to kind of just pull outside and almost fish like where their boats are and out, right? Yeah, that's right. Is that about right? That's right. Because they will. They'll, I mean, so you're fishing the it. same shallow water area. You're just fishing outside yeah. 
like where their boats are and outside of that and just fishing it with like drop shots and stuff, what we doing? The same thing, spinner baits, moving baits, gotcha. I mean, it, same, same baits. Just fishing. Just, just fishing. But instead of fishing one or two foot of water, you're fishing four or five foot of water with the same type of baits. Yeah. Okay. And it, it, I'm telling you, y'all catch more fish that way because them fish are going to jerk bait will come into play in that four or five foot of water. It will too. That's right. That's right. So that, that's, that's our strategy for, for Sunday, but uh, y'all, y'all own fishermen, y'all need to you know, they was comfortable y'all. And, and just cause we're throwing them baits, you know, the main thing is, is what are you confident with? You know, that's the bait that y'all need to be throwing. Um, but that, like I said, it's up to y'all. I mean, when you said you're going all, you plan on going all the way back cause fish are gonna move in a spawn. You know, one thing I said earlier was I'm just looking for the warmest water. Yeah. Like it might be in the back of a creek and it might be kind of just a side pocket where it hits the sun, hits it right and warms up. but. I mean, just as long as the water's warm, is that is that kind of the same? Yeah. So if you if you go to a back of a pocket where there's a creek, it's going to be cooler because of all this running water we're getting. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you're talking about is side, side pocket pockets. where there's maybe just a little uh, stream coming in. That that's, sunshine. Yeah. And the ones that are to the the ones where the back of them are to the northwest, generally speaking, are going to be the warmest. Yeah. Especially after today with the southeast wind at 79 degrees. Yeah, and the same weather tomorrow. Yep. So okay. yeah. Anybody got any questions for them? Yeah. Hey, on a drop shot, are you going to use a worm or like a small swim bait? Uh, we're going to use a four and three quarter inch zoom worm is mm -hmm. what we use. Yeah. Using the zoom finesse worm? Yep. yep. Yeah, I like that hook you, you use. Yeah, it's, it's easy. Yeah, it is. And he's the one that what showed hook, it to What me. hook are we using? Uh, it's a decoy. I think it's like a 117 yeah. offset is what the name of it is. Yeah. Um, man, it's, it's, it's dummy proof. And, and yeah, if you break off, it is so easy to tie it back, you know, that quick and you're back to fishing. So, yeah. How far you set your hook from the bottom? So I do a lot different than most. I go from a foot to a two foot. Uh, Vic, he, he shortens his up a little bit. Do you do yours for more action? No, I see I pull mine from the side and so you gotta think about it, your weight's back here. He's fishing his up, I'm fishing mine on the side and it's pretty much gonna be the same depth off the bottom. Same height off the bottom, you're yeah. just more of an angle. Yeah, I just like having that And you guys there. are kind of casting this thing out there. You're not like drop shot, drop shot, and you're no. fishing a drop shot shallow and medium depth, so you're casting it away from the boat. Right, right. yeah. And we're just working it like a Texas rig. I mean, honestly. Around right stumps. Break. Stumps, brush, uh, edges of grass lines, your pond weed, whatever. I, I just mean, need them not to lose a phone. In this dirty water is clean. clean. Or like uh, did yesterday. So that's a good point. So so clean water, you need to use more of a natural color like we do. Uh, your watermelons or whatever. If it's dirty water, you need to go to a darker color like June bug red or um, black. I mean, it don't matter. But dirty water, we, we use dirt, uh, darker colors. And that seems to work better for us. Awesome. Pretty good. It's good. Thank you. Anything else? Any other questions? All right. We'll we'll get the women's strategy. Yeah, you've got <laughs> hey, you've got a guy trying to tell you how to catch the big ones, and then you got a guy trying to tell you how to catch checks and maybe catch a big one. So, uh, well, Cody, I appreciate you coming here and doing that, man. Um, I know we, we talked about you maybe doing this one with me, and then you had some other obligations, but I, I appreciate you beating feet to get up here. Um, hey, thank all of y'all for joining us tonight. We want to thank Lake Fort Marina as always. They're so gracious to let us come up here and take over their whole upper room and, and again i'm sorry for being late thank y'all i know some of y'all helped set this up so thank y'all very much you shut your mouth right now <laughs> but seriously man i get to uh you know i've been uh i have had some crazy stuff in my life off the water lately and this kind of pulled me away from some of the content but i don't want anybody that watches the content to think that that doesn't mean that i don't realize the awesome opportunity that I've had thanks to each and every one of you guys here and all the people watching behind the camera. Um, I'm very aware of what I owe to y'all and that's why I always try to take the time to do whatever I can to help y'all. Try to get guys like Cody, talk them into coming up here and helping y'all. I mean, Cody's gonna be competing Sunday with the rest of y'all, but he's trying to help you any way he can. And uh, I'm just very, very grateful for the opportunity that you guys have given me. So thank y'all very much. And uh, we'll be back in two weeks. I'm not going to any tournaments till mid to late May, so we'll be back in two weeks for the foreseeable future. So thank you.